Uh, welcome back, everyone. We're here with uh, competition. Is this April 2020 T3? Uh, the QSOC competition, of course. And uh, we got a nice final here. So we've got um, yeah, we've got Hysam, Hysam Afri from Macquarie. He's a second year studying Bachelor of IT against Fahad, who is on the right there. And they're going to get the lag in the way. Fahad is from. UTS studying a Bachelor of Business and he's in his final year, so I think third year now. Um, and yeah, commentating with me is? Uh, it's me, Josh Hong. Hi everyone. Uh, welcome back to another final. Uh, probably one of the biggest events of the year so far. So far so good. So yeah, we've been on like a bit of a, bit of a hiatus. Actually like last week, uh, you heard Lockie commentating for the nine ball comp which is actually being rendered um, right now as we speak. So probably when this co when this video is being uploaded, Nine Ball, Nine Ball comp will already be, have been released. Um, but yeah, it's, it's nice to get back into the swing of things and bring you guys more content. Um, obviously, because of COVID and stuff, uh, we've been uh, we've been on a uh, lighter, much lighter schedule. But yeah, like this period is all about um, getting back into the swing of events and being able to host all the stuff that we do normally. So just getting into the match here, uh, Hysam's on the way. Um, and he'll break now from the rail, just off center. Positive stroke, nothing seems to have gone in, so open table for Fahad. Yeah, so today's uh, format was pretty standard of Kizok Comp, so it's eight ball, uh, race to five in the in the normal bracket, but here for the final we'll be doing race to seven, um, lag to break as you saw, and um, yeah, core pockets and everything, and uh, looks like the players are using a magic rack to rack up as well. And actually today I didn't compete, but Josh competed. Um, Josh, how, how, how was your performance today in the competition? Um, I was actually quite lucky to stay in, in many respects, uh, but I fought my way through to the semis, where I then got absolutely by Hyson, the guy who just made a brilliant shot to the middle right now. Uh, he deserved the victory, he outplayed me very well, but I am looking forward to competing in uh, future tournaments and hopefully maybe I can win one or two. Yeah, cool. So Fahad is actually, um, I'd say he's one of the older players in QSOC. He's part of the older generation. He's probably been in longer, been in the society longer than I have. Um, so he's probably in the generation above mine, but it's cool to see that he's still around. And then for Hysam, I think this is probably his, uh, I think this is his first slash second year in QSOC. So he's still a bit of a newcomer, but um, obviously he's proven himself. He's gone to the final. Um, so we know he has a bit of skill behind him as well. So it's definitely nice to see some new faces like that as well um, in these sorts of competitions. Uh, obviously, like our competition isn't, you know, of the highest professional level. I think we, I think we would, I would describe uh, this level of play as sort of anywhere from intermediate to amateur. Um, but undoubtedly, like both of these guys made it through about three round, three four rounds of um, of our tournament today. So you can expect some degree of skill from them. Yeah. And talking about skill, Hassan just about to take a jump here, um, which almost made. Uh, it wasn't a foul, but he's left uh, Bahad in with an easy beginner. Um, potentially. Pull it out. Played it with a bit of pace there, uh, which. Best choice, I would say. As you can see on the table, just on the right side near the top, um, there is a problem ball. Um, two problem balls actually. There's one, the 14 ball and the one ball. Uh, I can't see. I don't think. I don't think they are. I don't think they're touching, but they're definitely a problem that both players will have to address later on. Nice try there from Fahad. Um, as you can see, like this rack is pretty open, uh, this opening rack. Um, the thing you'll find with 8-ball is you will usually get a pretty good spread apart from one or two problem clusters. So I'd, uh, like you are saying, Josh, I'd say the problem cluster here is the 14 and the 1. Uh, that's for both players, you know, not just one of them because either ball isn't really in a nice position. But, uh, yeah, like I think you'll find throughout this game that the, April fr the way 8-ball frames play out at this level is pretty similar. You'll have like a pretty solid break 
Um, the players will take turns sort of potting some balls if they don't, you know, obviously break and run or run out. And then towards the end, when you start getting towards potting the eight ball, that's when you sort of see, um, I don't know, like, a, like, like more depth in the gameplay. So you'll see a lot more safeties, a lot more tactical play at that point. But, but, but earlier in the frame, you'll see a lot of this, you know, players sort of clearing up the table and trying to, um, trying to get more balls in so that they can sort of make their way towards the eight ball, if you like. And that was sort of a, that was an unexpected miss from five. Yeah, but you've got to remember that both players, even though they've been through like a lot, they've been through a couple of rounds. Um, both of them, it is a final. Um, that's a good shot from Paisa, may I add. It's a fantastic bank. Uh, but both players uh, would be rather fatigued, I would say. The competition's gone on for quite a while already. Um, so both players would undoubtedly still be nervous. So it's a good chance for them to get their arm going as well. I should mention as well, this is actually, this will be the second competition we've hosted at Bowood. So the thing is, like, when Burwood, when City Heroes Burwood opened, wait, was it last year? Yeah, it was. So it was sort of late last year, it was beginning to open, and there was sort of like a soft open, and then um, earlier this year it opened. Um, yeah, I, can't, I can't remember if it was late last year it fully opened, um, but uh, when that was happening, um, we were advertising to that, the fact that we were hosting competitions and stuff at Burwood and events at Burwood. But funnily enough, this is only the second, because of the COVID sort of... Um, in a hold up, this is only the second competition we've been able to host uh, at the Burwood venue. So this will definitely, like for your view on camera, this will definitely be a contrast to all the previous videos we posted. But I think you'll agree, Josh, that like the equipment we have at Burwood um, and the, the layout and the, you know, even the seats behind uh, the tables and stuff, it's all of a, it's all like much higher quality. That's right. and. Much better quality, and it looks like first frame might be wrapped up by Hyson. Uh, cue balls on the rail a little bit, but some good cueing is required here. But I think we'll make it. There we go, that's the first frame. That's a good out from Hyson. Uh, both players had chances in the frame uh, with a problem cluster as well, but I think Hyson dealt with it a bit more confidently, I would say. Yeah, I noticed Hyson has quite a uh, not slow, but he has a very methodical playstyle, I'd say. Probably among one of the more slow, slow, slower players from what I was watching in the semi-final brackets and quarterfinals, but um, not in a bad way. Like, it's paid off for him well there. And um, for Farhad's playstyle, um, I'd say it's in a similar area. Maybe not as um, not as slow as uh, I've seen Hyson play. Maybe a little bit faster, but still in that similar area where it's sort of more of a tactical game rather than a rhythm game or a speed game sort of thing. Yeah, it just goes to show you how diverse QSOC is and, you know, it's really nice to see, like, two players with contrasting styles uh, make it to the final and battle it out. It always makes for good viewership. So, yeah, Heisen with the break here. I expect he'll get a pretty good spread from what I've been seeing all day as well. Yeah, pretty solid hit, and then um, I think that was the 14 ball that went in, and the 10 ball in the same pocket, so... Um, I think for this layer, I can't really see from this angle, but if that pink 12 ball can come in the, bo in the bottom right corner, then this should be a pretty good chance for some sort of um, attempt at a break and run or a run out for Heisen. Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to predict that he'll take stripes, but it will all depend on whether that 12 ball goes. So yeah, like back to back to the equipment at Bowood. Obviously, like it's a different venue, and um, City Heroes has a bunch of diamond tables here instead of the Brunswick's that we had at George Street. Um, so you're seeing here like CBPA cloth, diamond ta uh, diamond are these nine footers, yeah, diamond nine foot tables. Um, and you'll notice that the pockets here. I'd say the pockets here are a little bit tighter than at George. Actually, they're they're way tighter because um, <laughs> the the pockets at George Street are freaking buckets. Like they're really massive just because so many people play on the table and um, you know the cloth just gives more has more give and more give the more people play on a table but I'd say the pockets here are much more squarely cut and much pointier on the tip um, and yeah much tighter overall so the the equipment you, you see the players playing on today is going to be exceptionally harder to play on than let's say George Street where um, you might see a different sort of play style because the pockets are so big just going back to your point about um, the pockets being uh, a bit more squarely cut, um, 
if you saw just there, Hyacin played a very difficult shot and he almost made it. And I would I would say that if that shot was played at George Street, that would have rolled in somehow. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So it just goes to show you how difficult the table is to play. You really can't take any shot for granted uh, on these tables especially. So, um, But that's what makes um, the feet of these two all the more impressive, you know, playing on these tables, but getting through all those rounds and getting all those wins is quite a good achievement. Yeah, for sure it's like harder to cheat the pocket at Burwood. Tyson here with another chance. Might spin around. Um, not quite enough pace. He would have liked to come off the rail a couple more inches and it would have been perfect on the 12. I think he can still cut it in, uh, but he'll be going away from the black ball, so he have to manipulate the cue ball in the appropriate manner. Yeah, it's a super tough shot. Because one is a hard cut. Oh, do, does it go in the pocket, Josh? It does, right? Yep. Yeah. So one is a hard cut, and two, like yeah, like you were saying, the position on the eight is just really hard. See, so, yeah, I'm not, I'm not surprised that um, Hyson there just tried to fire it, just tried to have, make something happen, because it was really, it was really hard to come around the table, come back from the eight. And yeah, it's actually quite a good shot that Barhart's played there. He's caught Hyson behind the six ball. Um, Hyson. I don't think he can actually see the 12 ball anymore, um, so he might try to kick this ball. Just missed the 12 ball by a feather, but that was a very good attempt from Heisen. Definitely 8-Ball is the game of choice, uh, I'd say in for QSOC anyway. Most players that come into the society uh, start by playing 8-Ball, it's like the most common, like everyone knows the rules, it's the most commonly played game type. Um, the good thing about it is if, if you come in as a, as a new player, you'll probably already be familiar with 8-Ball, so it's not hard to adjust to the competition environment that we have. I think Fahad's just trying to trying to make something happen with that brown seven ball. Maybe he might try and get back. Uh, actually, I'm not sure what he'll do. He's, he's probably thinking that in his head right now. He could either go into it or try and knock the 12 out or something like that. But it looks like he's trying to come short side. Which has worked out. It's kind of in a, he's kind of in a middle ground right now. So again, he'll have to take the cue ball away from the two balls. Uh, the the 4 ball and the 8 ball have to go away from those if he wants to cut the 7 ball in. Again, like Heisen shot before, it's a very tough cut, this one. So he's made the pot, that's well played. But from here, it looks like he'll have to play a safety house. Yeah, I don't think the... It doesn't look like the pink 4 ball goes into the bottom left really really tough to play a safety here just because um, Hysom's, Hysom's last object ball is really close to the pocket so it's really hard to leave him in a it's really hard for Farhad to leave the cue ball in a place where that's hard to pot unless of course it's behind the 8 or something one of the options he could have is to try and pot the ball send the cue ball towards the rail Actually, try to block the pocket with the four, which was a good attempt. But yeah, I reckon he was he was trying to play some sh something like you suggested, Josh. Like send the four ball over to that pocket, and then either if it pots it or blocks the pocket, it's probably a good thing. But yeah, like like that that's what I was saying before. Like when you have only three object balls left on the table in eight ball, it's very hard to play safe uh, against your opponent. And then yeah, Heisen capitalized on that uh, easy pot on the twelve ball, and then it's just like a little. Test the shot, I guess, on the final eight. Yeah, he slightly overran uh, position on that. Maybe he had slightly too much spin, but pretty sure it's just the adrenaline talking at this point. 
confidently stroked in. That's frame two done. It's two nil. So thoughts on the match so far, Harris? I know it's only been two frames, but any observations that you've made? Yeah, like, I, th I think we're just seeing, we're literally just seeing that like um, we've got two players of very similar play styles. Uh, I don't know if you remember the sort of the past finals that we have. I'm trying to think back to like. Like Oliver Chang, this is nine ball obviously, but Oliver Chang versus Ray Cole. Um, i trying to think of another one here. Can't remember off the top of my head, but that was just an example of one. Like we've had a lot of finals where we've had contrasting play styles. Oliver was really fast and Ray Cole was a methodical one. But here I feel like it's really well balanced. Like we have two players of similar caliber. I think Heism's just been a little bit more consistent on his game like throughout this match. So we'll see if he can hold that through throughout the whole match. Yeah, Heisman's definitely feeling confident. Um, I know uh, in, in, my sem in, my, in my semis against him, rather, um, that I got smashed 5-0. So, while well, I didn't play well, he would still have been feeling pretty good about himself. Um, so, he definitely carries some sort of a psychological, I guess, advantage-ish. Actually, now that I remember, um the, f the first commentary that I ever did with Glandon, Glandon Zeng, back in 20, no, early 2019, um, was actually April comp. I forget which semester, because that's when UNSW was back on semesters. I forget which period it was, but the final was Kevin Alexander and Fahad. So, um, yeah, like that, that was the first match I ever commentated. But unfortunately, that match, I think the recording got corrupted. So... Um, <laughs> we never actually got to see that match, uh, but um, yeah, like I was saying during the play introduction, that Fahad is one of you know like one of the OGs of Kisat, like he's been around for a while, and that just shows you, right? He's played this competition before and he's gone to the finals uh, in the past. Yeah, so who knows what it takes? What it takes to get there? Just in the break there, Heisen got a very good spread, but. He made something, but he missed the shot right after, so the table was still open and I had capitalised, now he's taking solids. Doesn't seem to be too much of a problem. Actually, I'll, I'll reply to your question again, Josh. Um, like, in regards to the match so far, I'd say probably the, the most interesting thing is the Heisman's breaks have been really good. So you see, like, even now, like, every ball is completely open except for the stripes, for the red stripe ball in the top left. But I think, actually, the breaks have been really consistent and, like, yeah, it's been, it's been quite been quite open tables to be honest. Um, that's not something you see all the time in April. Yeah, especially not at this level. And interesting to see how he'll go about dealing with the eleven. Uh, definitely bankable, but I'm just trying to come around there. Not sure if the fourteen goes into the middle. Tremendous pot, and he's actually freed the 11. It's a great shot from Heisen. He knew the angle was there. He used the angle he had on the round 15 ball to play that pace and knock the 11 off the cushion. That was a great shot for Heisen. Obviously, from a snooker background, so he does have some knowledge about breaking out clusters. Heisen looking to build a quick fire 3 0 lead here. There's not too many pots away. I wonder what Q Heisen has. I actually can't see from here. It's a pretty interesting design. Maybe I'll ask him after the game, but yeah. Yeah, interesting, interesting color too. Now he's just come a bit short on the 14. But maybe he can hold. Just come somewhere near the middle of the table. Yeah, that's a great shot. Fantastic from Heisen. Just a bit closer to the rail than he would have liked, uh, but I reckon he can fold. Great queuing there from Heisen, and it's 
as I said, a quick fire 3-0 lead. Um, I think, Harris, you were right. The One of the greatest advantages and one of the good observations you've made about Heisman's game was the breaks. When he breaks, they break very well and very far. And not many clusters can be seen when he breaks, so, which is a huge advantage, especially if you make a ball off the break, which you then can go about just clearing the balls up. So definitely a big advantage to have uh, in a race to seven, especially. 3 nil to Heisman. Yeah, I've noticed that with 8-ball, uh, because you're using all 15 balls on the tray, uh, like on the table, um, there's sort of like a sweet spot for breaking. So if you break too soft in 8-ball, you'll end up with clusters sort of towards the, uh, the long rails on the left and right. If you break too hard, all the balls will spread out, but then they'll cluster back up because they have so much power, and they'll sort of like come back together again. But the good thing about Heisman's break is he's in, a happy, he's in the happy medium that's really good for an 8-ball break. You'll see it here again, and you've seen it in the past frames as well. We'll, we'll, we'll watch again. You see, like a really solid, firm hit, but not too hard. Okay, not as obviously not as successful this time. There's still sort of a cluster around the um, the foot spot, but um, like you see where I'm going, right? Like uh, there's yeah. there's sort of a misconception that like the harder you hit the balls. In, in any pool game like the better your break will be but there's sort of like these nuances that I think um, add a lot more to the break than just raw power right like, I'm pretty sure we've, I've discussed this in a final video before but the wing break the wing ball break where you break from the side is another tactic that people use to sort of um, do well in A ball but in this case Heisman's using the dead on uh, hitting the head ball dead on and um, using the rail to bridge as well, which is interesting. So, but yeah, it's working out well. That's right, and not a lot of players would actually bridge from the rail. They'd actually prefer to have the hand on the table in a just a round grip, break that way. The most important thing for Fahad is to get one frame on the board. I think that's a big mental um, challenge here. Being 3-0 three, three down is obviously never a good feeling, so um, I'm hopeful that he'll be able to pull some momentum back. Yeah, that's right. Even if you're 3-1 behind, the fact that you're in the game somewhat, you know, and you can, you're still there to contest it, it means actually quite something. And it does it does your brain um, quite, quite the treatment, I would say. Big advantage to have. So. Speaking of uh, putting a frame on the board, yeah, it, it's, it's like the psychology of the sport is actually really interesting because, in my opinion, it's like pulls one of the most psychologically demanding sports like I've, I've ever seen I'd say it's 50-50 with the physical and the mental game with pool definitely and that's not that's something you don't realise when you pick up the sport and when you walk into it you just think it's hitting balls but it's definitely 50-50 I'd say on that, in, that, in that regard yeah definitely I agree with that yeah, so now the rack seems to be wide open uh, high sum just asking there if it was solid, yes, confirmation from Farhad. Closer to the 16 he would have liked, but nonetheless still got a shot. And you see, and you see um, Fahad, I think, looked like a tiny bit desperate to get that frame on the board, as you would have mentioned. So he, he is playing, from what I can tell, a touch quicker. There's actually a really good chance, I think. Yeah, so, so nice easy slow roll from there. Fahad's biggest problem is to get from the 1 to the 3 nicely. What's good is that the the eight ball is sitting nicely over the middle pocket. But that, that was always tough, trying to get from the one to the three, because just because the three is so close to the, the long rail and sort of to the other side of the table. Difficult shot here. Uh, 
can, can he see it? Problems at all, all balls go. It's not a safe ball on the table. What sucks is that Fahad actually got some really good draw out of that shot on the, the one ball. It's just his angle was a little bit off from the previous shot. It's a little bit too straight, I think. So that's where um, Yeah, that's that's where the problem came. Getting on the three. Yeah, surprisingly uh, he's not capitalized on the chance. Didn't expect that. So I believe he actually called that corner out there and said he was going to cut it. But instead he actually played with inside but hit the rail first and ended up kicking the ball. This is an example of an 8 ball frame where your opponent is able to clean every ball up except one object ball and then it becomes really easy for you to play safeties on him. Just like uh, Heisen's shown us there, like all he has to do is play a stop shot or like a roll up shot and because there's only one ball that Fahad can hit on the table, uh, it becomes really easy for Heisen to play those safeties and really hard for Fahad to hit that ball. Fahad's there done there is foul, but it's an intentional foul. Um, so he's trying to actually tie up the three ball and the 14 ball team to kind of stop Heisen from clearing up in one go. Uh, but Heisen can use the, the orange ball to now potentially knock out the 14 ball and free it up for, so he can pot it. Yeah, the thing about an intentional foul in this situation is you're sort of leaving it more to luck and randomness on this shot right here, the breakout shot, for something bad to happen. Sort of like that. Um, because even though, you know, Fahad played that intentional foul, there were a lot of balls for Heisen to play off to try and go for a breakout there. So you're relying more on the fact that something random is going to happen after the breakout rather than whether the breakout itself is going to happen with those shots. What a chance this is. He's not taking it. Yeah, as you can see, he's not happy. He just kicks his feet in the air. I think just a tad frustrated. Heisen, now I feel like this chance, he cannot let go. And interesting to mention that um, Heisen actually has, if you look at his stats, more of a snooker background. Um, I do know for a fact that he goes to Tattersall's club in the city and plays snooker there. Which actually helps with your potting and potentially your safety as well. So I, I'm guessing you play snooker there as well, Josh? Um, not there. I actually um, go to Hornsby RSL. Every now and then, not too often, but if I feel like uh, if I feel like I want to improve my potting, or if I just want to feel like that I can't play snooker, I just go to Hornsby RSL. And remind myself that I'm not a snooker player. Actually, speaking of snooker, we actually had to cancel SnookerCom earlier this year. Um, which was which was going to be held at Burwood as well, um, and I think Burwood is actually a much nicer, like infinitely nicer layout than George Street for snooker in particular. That's right. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. Especially when Burwood has um, the star tables that the professionals actually use in tournaments, at, like for example at the Masters. Actually, both players actually just now um, they missed the chances. Um, this frame was turning out to be a bit scrappy. Should, should a Fahad lose this, it'd be another big psychological blow. And there again, the safety just behind the eight. And Fahad with a big, big problem. This frame actually hasn't been like a clean sweep. Like Fahad's had a lot of chances at the table. And Heisen's just been safetying him a lot. Um, yeah, like not the cleanest frame we've seen. But this just, yeah, this just goes to show you like, this is what I was saying before, how like the tactical play of April really comes in in the last Last part, last parts of the frame rather than earlier. Wow, he's he's had a lather at it, and he's actually gotten away with it. And it's like it's usually the opposite in rotation games like nine ball and ten ball. Um, the safety, actually, the tactical play and the safety usually happens earlier in the frame when there's a lot more blocker balls, 
Um, and then you'll see more of a cleanup crew sort of thing in the later stage of the 9mm and 10mm frame. But yeah, like the 8 ball is the complete opposite. Yeah, but again, now what a chance uh, Bowen has here. Thanks. He's attempted to snooker him, but he couldn't make it. And he's made it. Now, he can't pop the 8, I don't think. He doesn't go past the 14. So his face has to play safe. He's actually trying to cut it into the corner. And... 14 ball hanging over the pocket will not help Fahad. Yeah, had that have gone in, I think Fahad would be in a much better position than right now. So this should be a pretty easy position for Tyson. A little bit thin, but I, I think he'll be he'll be able to bear down on this shot and get it in. Yeah, that's right. Just play with some right hand side. Probably play off two cushions for this one, maybe three. There you go, one, two. So two cushions it is. Again, tight on the rail. Nice and good. Cue this nicely. Oh, well. That was, that was actually surprising. Almost missed that one. Uh, but Tyson quickly into 4 0 lead, and this is taken to a very one sided game, per se. Yeah, just to reiterate, like, uh, it, the, the state of this game is all dependent on whether Fahad can get on the board or not. That's like the biggest obstacle here. Right. I think the last frame Fahad had actually a lot of good chances, um, but he didn't take them in. That does quite a lot of damage to you psychologically during the game. Um, when you when you could just when chances are tossed up to you easy or hard and you can't take them, um, you do feel disappointed in yourself, and that does hurt you psychologically during the match. So a big blow to Fahad, I would say, in the context of the match. breaking. Notice that even though he's 4 0 up ahead, he's not rushing into break or rushing into any shots. Um, he takes his time, chalks up his cue, that is nice to delivers it smoothly. Ten more drops, so just taking the taking your time um, even when you're ahead or at an advantage can be a great strength to have. Maybe rushing into too many shots can cause you to make mistakes. Uh, I know I'm prone to that a lot. Um, so Taking your time is actually quite crucial, especially important. Yeah. Tyson can pop the two ball in from the middle. Yeah, so it's a nice one. Five goes into the bottom right hand corner. I have to get a nice angle of that. The thing about Hysom's form is you'll notice that his bridging arm stays super straight and it's really parallel with the cue. Um, reminds me of uh, Jason Dye's stroke actually. Oh, Jason Dye's uh, uh, forearm, so the bridging arm. Um, so Jason Dye played QSOC League a few seasons ago and if you watch that video you'll notice that he has a similar sort of uh, very straight parallel arm with the Q for the for the bridging arm. So that's that's what I like about yeah, Hysim's stroke. Yeah, Hysim's actually just broken out the pack there but still's got, still, he's still got the 6 ball. He might even choose to bank it, but he might use the four ball to come around and possibly knock the six ball out, which is tried, but... And actually, Fahad took a fat hit of the vape just then, so I'm, I'm hoping that'll give him like some sort of morale boost to get back in the game. Hopefully, anyway. He doesn't seem... He, 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 was, a bit, he was a bit disappointed in um, the previous frame, but it looks like he's not giving up, or he's quite confident in that, so... I think Heisen just trying to force the issue. He actually did manage to knock the six out, but he missed the pot. Um, the one ball is actually safe now. It doesn't go. So He's got a one ball out, but he's got the, uh, another ball in safety. Yeah, you gotta, you got to empathize with Fahad at this point. Um, I've been in this situation so many times, like 4-0 down, 5-0 down. And then what you're presented with is a really hard rack to solve. In this situation, the 12 ball next to the 8 for the stripes is like, 
I don't think it goes anywhere. Does it even go in the bottom left? I feel like you would hit the 8. Yeah, does the 12 go in the bottom left? I think it does. From what I can see, I think it does. If it should... Well, now it's okay, yeah, never mind. That was, that was a really good shot. And I think it, I think the A should still go in the either left middle or the right middle. Hopefully, anyway. Oh. I feel like there, what I mentioned before here, I think he rushed into the shot a little bit. Um, he's left the cue ball on the rail. Uh, fortunately, he hasn't left anything for Heisen to capitalize too much. But he is eyeing up a potential combo up the rail with the one ball into the five, 74. If he makes this, this will be an insane shot. So he did hit it firm, he hit it nice actually, but just got the wrong line of it as well. Yeah, combos as well, unless they're dead set, um, they're not actually straightforward. You've got to actually make a lot of the combos and you can't take any of them for granted. Well, I thought he would play the 14 first, but now the 6 goes into the middle. All the solid balls are open as well, so a great chance for Heisen to go up 5 nil. I'd say this shot right here is where Heisen's stroke benefits him a lot. Because he can get a clean follow through using that arm on long shots like that. Long straight, straight in shots. Um, I know you saw that, like you potted it, potted it really well. Uh, that's great pace, that's fantastic pace. Eh? Any harder you would have scratched in the pocket. Eh? So the 8 goes, but slightly hampered, I would say. You see Heisen just checking the line of the shot. That's what everyone has to do. Um, just check the line of the shot. Just take your time with it. Especially in difficult shots like this. Uh, I know he's 4 nil up ahead, but... He doesn't want to throw away a chance. Like, no way. Fantastic shot. And it is 5 nil. Huh? Um, on the recording, we're going on about 40 minutes. So this seems like a pretty quick one if... Uh, if Heisem can wrap it up, but yeah, like we'll have to see how far I can do here. Yeah. That was a super hard shot that um, that Heisem pulled off for the last eight. Yeah, it's actually quite nice to see um, Heisem and Baha just exchanging smiles and slightly joking around. So it's good to see both of them in good spirits in the match. I know Baha would be disappointed in his performance, but you know, it's good to see him not giving up and trying to make something happen with the cue ball. So we've actually had a few questions come into the QSOC page recently about uh, like membership eligibility for competitions and for joining the society in general. Um, just to clarify, um, you have to be a currently studying university student to join the society and only society members can participate in our events. So it, like, uh, this the, it's like it's sort of implied that you have to be a uni student as well to be a part of our events. Um, if you're an alumni, uh, you can't participate in our events. So if you've graduated already, and um, the only time we allow non-university students to participate is HSC Social Pool, which is a chance for kids coming out of their year 12 education and moving to uni to experience QSOC and um, see what it's like. And then we offer them a an early, sort of like an early access membership kind of thing. Um, but that's specifically reserved for them. If you're in any other um, I guess demographic or group that's not a university student unfortunately you can't join the society uh, that's not just a rule set by us it's actually sort of a, a, like a logistical thing as well with the whole um, affiliation with ARC um, but yeah that's that's the bottom line you have to be a university student to join um, if you don't have if you are a uni student and you're thinking about joining and you just want to come along to an event to try out, you can sign up for memberships on the day as well. So we accommodate that as well. Yeah, 
nice little safety there. You were saying before, Josh, how Heisman paces himself, doesn't get too ahead of himself, doesn't rush, even though he's ahead by so much. And that's what I really like about his game as well. Yeah, he can actually, if he wants to, he can put the tempo in the corner and break out the 5 ball and 13 ball. But he's decided to play safe, and that's actually not too bad. 5 ball stand up. He's forced to play. And that is a foul. So, Harris. Um, What's just happened there is none of the balls touched the rail, um, and so I believe that constitutes as a foul after you've taken the shot. Yeah, that's that's so we call that uh, we call the rule rail after contact. Um, so that's probably one of the more niche rules in in QSOC able play and um, professional able play in general that beginners coming in don't usually know about. Uh, so yeah, you have to hit a rail after after hitting the object ball with any ball if that makes sense so after you take a shot and after the cue ball hits the ball that you're going for if a ball doesn't hit after that hit a rail after that point so any ball on the table then it'll be considered a foul and you saw that uh, Fahad took the ball in hand that's right I think um, just then I think Heisen wanted to play it a bit softly but he th I think he just slightly decelerated on the shot um, causing his uh, key power to be quite lessened so the heart seems to be quite relaxed, actually. I think I had a couple of these balls. Uh, not not the 14 ball, I mean the... God, what colour is that? The orange 15? The, is it 15? 13. 13, the 13 ball. Um, he's had a couple of those where it's sort of blocked from behind by one of Hyson's object balls, so it's really hard to get on the short side of that. Hyson forced to play the fine ball. He, doesn't, he wouldn't want to touch it, but... Can't see the two balls, so he has to play five. And in doing so, he's actually potted uh, the 13 ball. So, turn is now to Faha. And it's actually not a bad chance that he's got here. He might play a top left hand. If he wants to, or he could just come out straight away. Top left. Actually, played the 15 first. That's actually not a bad shot. Yeah, that was a nice little breakout. He didn't nudge the 8 too hard so that it went to the rail and made it hard to pot. So, just positioned on the 12 here. So, did something happen there? I, I couldn't see from this angle. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, he's asked Heisen, and apparently there was no foul. So I guess we'll just go with it. Honestly, I couldn't see because um, from where we're commentating on the right, bottom right hand corner of the screen, so Fahad was covering the shot there, so we'll. we'll, we'll, we'll um, obviously, if, if Heisen didn't have a problem with it, then, then then we don't have a problem with it either. It's, it's in the interest of the players, not in the interest of us, so. But I mean, we'll see it on the recording anyway when we watch this over. Fahad can still get to it. I'm gonna guess what what Fahad tried to do there. I think he was trying to bank into the rail, come back and hit the 12 and nestle up behind the 8 ball. I think that's maybe what he tried, which was a nice attempt. He got the right speed, just not the right angle. So a little bit unfortunate there. And he's actually given Isom a perfect angle to come across for the five in the same pocket as the two ball. Oh, he's actually missed. Oh, has he got away with it? Not happy with himself, Isom. Can Fahad see this? left it now. Wouldn't be surprised if Heisen cleared up here. Great shot. Uh, he drew it out. Interesting how 
he played the two ball there instead of the combo. If he had to put a little bit more power on that, the five probably would have gone in an unpotable spot. But he had just the right amount of speed so that it floated outwards and was potable to the bottom left after that breakout. Yeah, and there we go. That's uh, six nil. Uh, still yet to play uh, 50 minutes of the match. So the game progressing on very quickly. Yeah, it looks like we're coming up on 45 minutes just now. So it'll probably be a quick one for you guys. Um, yeah, I really want Fahad, at least even if he sees defeat in this match, I'd really love him to see get a frame on the board. Because you hate to, you, even though a whitewash is a sort of a interesting occurrence, occurrence, um, you hate to you hate to see the player that does get whitewashed. So. Absolutely, I agree with that. And it's good to see um, Fahad still wanting to compete, not giving up, and just be like, yeah, look. He's not saying, look, uh, you can have the frame now, you know, not taking any interest. He's still actively involved, trying to make the shots, trying to make something happen, and that's really nice to see. Again, Tyson taking his time on the break. This one's a better spread, much better spread. That's a great break. I think other than solids, it's a pretty open rack, I would say. Confident struck from Heisen. Uh, that wasn't easy, bridging over the ball and on the rail. Looks like his only problem is going to be the nine ball. I'm not sure if it goes into the middle where the seven ball is. I think it will go off the seven. Maybe not clean into the pocket without hitting the seven, but it will definitely go off the seven for sure. Okay. So yeah, it will, if that's the case, then Heisen doesn't have too many problems. And this is a great chance to potentially complete a whitewash. Lovely draw stroke there. That's, what, that's one of the things I really like about high stroke stroke. When he draws the cube. Cube ball, sorry. Oh, so okay, my, <laughs> my mistake, so it so did yeah, go clean. So it actually went. Just clean. That's the eternal commentator struggle. Not having the correct viewing angle to actually see what's going on. Not just in QSOC, but for every single commentator in the world, that's, that's the eternal struggle. And off to Cushion Heisen now. Got a perfect angle on the 15, just to go back slightly with a touch of the right hand side. Oh, he's decelerated well. Can you believe it? Well, it would have been quite nice to end it with a break and run, but unfortunately, it's not to be. Now, a big, big task up ahead for Farhad. At this point, Fahad should just play like he's got nothing to lose because he really does have nothing to lose. So um, I think that, that might give him a little bit of a confidence boost if he starts thinking like that. Um, yeah, so players are just agreeing to remove the magic rack. Yep, they can do that, yep. Not a, not a bad outcome though. Well, not sure. Can Heisman see the eleven? I think he can. Ah, oh, great strike. And I think the eight pops seems to the middle. I'm not quite sure. We can't see that well from here. I don't think the seven has moved. So if if, if it goes like the twelve ball earlier. Should just go clean. Yeah, for the nine ball, sorry. And he's got it in, and that's victory for Heisen. Seven new, a whitewash against Farhad and well played boys. Yeah, so there you have it. Eight ball competition T3. Uh, it's a pretty quick one. Um, well done to both players. Well done to Heisen. Congratulations for winning. Um, like I said, Heisen's a new phase in QSOC, so 
will definitely be nice to see him compete in future competitions as well. Right. And um, I'm sure you guys will see him return in the finals video, hopefully. That's right. And well done to all the players involved in today's competition. It was really nice to see a lot of people turn up for the competition. And it's great to see everyone have a lot of fun. Yeah, so thanks to all our competitors. Uh, thanks to City Heroes for letting, allowing us to host the event and use the tables. And um, thanks to the QSOC committee as well for helping out and organizing the event. Um, as for upcoming competitions and events, we've got HSC Social Ball coming up this weekend. Um, by the time this video goes up, I'm not sure when that will be, but um, yeah, obviously because of COVID, our schedule is a little bit dry at the moment, but definitely keep an eye out on the Facebook page, event section, and then as the year progresses and as um, restrictions lift, um, we'll be able to bring more and more events, and then hopefully we can get back into the normal swing of things um, by next year. At least, uh, I'm, I, I'm pretty optimistic for that. That's right. Um, so thanks for watching, guys. Um, thank you for listening to us. I've been, uh, I'm Josh Hall. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Um, thanks for watching, and yeah, we'll see you in the next one. All right, thanks, guys.